Hello and welcome. Today we're doing another project. Uh, it's the Raspberry Pi MP3 player. Now this doesn't seem that practical, but let's say you've, your MP3 player's died, you've got a backup battery, uh, battery brick for your phone, and you've got your Raspberry Pi on you, and maybe some headphones and a mobile phone. Well this, we're going to put all that together and hopefully get this MP3 player working. So what we need to do first is we need to connect to our Pi and as you can see here, I'm already logged into the Pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in the network configuration because what's going to happen is we're going to start up the Pi and it's going to automatically connect to a wireless network which will tether with our phone and then that's how we're going to connect to the MP3 player itself and execute commands. So all we're going to do here is go cat, well, this is going to show, um, show my config Yours should be fairly similar depending on your mobile device. And as you can see here, I've obviously changed my password so no one gets that. But the main important thing, if we just go into edit it, so what we've got here is the important lines are the um, interface. So your interface might be different, but mine's WLAN 0. Uh, the WPA SSID there is the um, broadcast name of your router or in this case your phone so what the whole idea is we tether it with our phone and that's what we're connecting to here so that's the wireless hotspot of your phone so the name there and of course the pre-shared key there which is the plain text password for it and in this example we're just using password now further down here we've got the address is static so once we've connected on my phone, a lot of phones, I've noticed with my, my Android phone, I'm not sure if it's older, but I, it doesn't actually show the IP address that's given to the device itself. So that's a bit of an issue. So what we want to do here is we set a static device, uh, static IP address, and then we'll just kind of work with that one. So for this one, I'm using 192.168.1.100, because I actually won't be tethering to my phone. I'll be using my current wireless network. It just means in the house that I'm currently in, I can check out the MP3 player anywhere in the house. So now we've got that all sorted, we'll exit out of that one. So we know we're connected to the wireless network. So what we need to do now is an update of the repository. So what we'll do is sort of apt get update, and that's just going to check see if there's any updates. And once finished, we can start installing our things we need to play music. So all that's going, I'll just kind of explain. This is going to be a bit of a weird video because I'm going to have this bit about what we're actually doing on the client side of it and then how it works playing music through it and then we'll kind of jump back to the application there how there's going to be actual, some actual video of this video, this MP3 player working in action, not connected to any computer using a backup battery I've got here. I'm sure there's plenty of ways that this would work a lot better, but this is the very, very basic way to get something working there. So we're going to be using command line tools, and we're going to be using SSH, and hopefully make something kind of simple that we can use our phone to change our songs with. So now that's all updated, all we do now is sudo apt-get install mpg123. This is one I always get mixed up between mpg123 or 321. So let's go ahead and install that one. So with these videos, I try and go a bit faster in them, so it's not being a long-winded video it gets you directly to the point if that's something you like then let me know otherwise I'll try and extend it out a bit further with this now we've got our basics of what we need so I'll just have a look I don't think I've got anything in the actual directory there so that's gonna be a minor issue I need to copy an mp3 across so 
So I'll just see if I've got an MP3 somewhere on computer I can put across there and get back to it. See you soon. And we're back. So you're probably wondering right now, well, we've installed MPG123. We've got a way to play the music. We're connecting to a wireless network, so you've got a rough idea of how we're going to connect to it. But where is this music coming from? Now, the Raspberry Pi itself has a limited amount of storage. That's where the USB storage comes in. So what we can actually do here is I've hooked up a USB drive, and what we can do is mount it. So I'll just unmount the drive because I've already mounted it. Great. So what I need to do first is find out what the drive's called. And as you can see here, we've got dev SDA. So all we need to do is type sudo mount dev SDA mount USB. Now your device could be different. An easy way to find out is when you're doing the D message as I did to find out what the device is called. It should actually say SDA and it should say if there's possible other devices. So you may have SDA uh, as you can see right here, where it says SDA colon, that could be SDA or SDA1, or depending on how many partitions there are on that drive. So that gives you a rough idea. And now that's mounted. So if we just uh, CD mount USB, we've got that MP3 sitting right there. Uh, you can tell it formatted with Windows because we've got system volume information, but that's not going to be an issue for what we're doing right now. Now, what we, um, since we know the file system on this, I believe, is NTFS, we'll just double check that one. And as you can see, oh no, it's VFAT. As you can see down here, uh, the amount of device is DevSDA on mount USB, and it is VFAT. So, what we want to do is get this working on startup. Well, we don't really need to work on startup. We'll get it working on startup regardless. You're not really going to walk around with a USB stick in there. It could be kind of annoying, but just for the sake of making it purely an MP3 player more than anything else, we'll make it work on startup. So in order to do this, we just need to go sudo nano etc fs tab. And we're adding a new device here. So this first part is the device, and in our case it's dev SDA. The mount point, so in this case as you saw, is mount USB. And here we're going to have what type? So it is VFAT. And for here, we'll actually set it so everyone's got permissions to it straight off the bat. So just read and write permissions because we're going to want to maybe delete files off here or do what we like if we want to copy more off the Raspberry Pi for some reason. So we're just going to type umask equals zero. And of course the dump and pass, which I'm sure you probably don't care about, we'll put a zero zero. And now we've saved that. So every time it boots up, it should go ahead and try and mount this device. And if it can't, we should just need to type mount mount USB or pseudo mount. So it's already mounted. But if we go ahead and unmount that, we should now be able to just type pseudo mount USB. And if we have a look there, we've got it mounted and we've got 414 megaspace on this flash drive. So now we've got the whole startup sorted. Now we just kind of need to bring it all together and we'll jump over to the phone side of it and get through the application now. So, see you soon. Now as you can see here, we've got the Raspberry Pi hooked up to my backup battery there. The backup battery is a bit dodgy, I to replace the batteries in it, but same kind of thing. Now if we go ahead and log in via the mobile, and we hit MPG123 and the MP3. We should. And there we go, working beautifully. Now we'll just hit cancel on that one. And we'll talk about automating with different scripts and all that so we can play other songs. Now, as you can see, we're at our terminal here. Now, you'll probably notice it's not the Raspberry Pi terminal, but actually my laptop's terminal. The reason for this is I actually have the music on my laptop and obviously not the USB drive. But the premise still stands, we just assume that the music directory I'm in now is my USB drive. So if I go ahead into the list of contents, you'll see I've got a few MP3s there. 
Now with playing MP3s, the easiest way to play all the MP3s is just to type mpg123 and star.mp3. Now what that's going to do is it's going to play all the MP3s in this directory. So if we just click um, type Control C on this one, it'll skip to the next one, and so on till we spam the Control C button, and it'll cancel out the queue. Now if we just clear our screen, you're probably wondering, well, what if we want to play random music? We don't always want to listen to the same songs over and over again. Otherwise we won't get to the end of our list. So in order to do this, we'll create a shell script to make it a lot easier. So to do that, we just type nano, and I'm just going to call this one random.sh. Now the command itself is find dot for that directory, dash i name, and we're going to say star.mp3, and that's just going to look for the mp3 format. We're going to pipe that one to mpg123, that's our program we're using, dash z, dash dash list, dash. If we exit that one, and we save the changes, now we just need to change permissions on it, which we type sh1 plus x random.sh. That's going to make it executable. We list it here, we'll see at the very bottom there, random.sh. At which point we just type dot slash random.sh. And as you can see now, it's picked up the first song, so recording that live. If we cancel that one, it'll go on to the next one. So you're just going to keep on going through and randomly playing songs rather than throughout the directory. But again, we can just spam the Control C button, and that's going to cancel it out. So that means when you log in via your phone, all you're typing is that one command to play all your music in a random order. Alternatively, of course, you've got that to play it in alphabetical order. Well, I hope you like that one. If you do, you can give me some feedback. Otherwise, have a nice day.